this one because it's a minor shape, right? But there's still no G in there, so I kind of dig that. You see what I mean? Even though he's playing a major chord under that. Right, I'm playing like a kind of a minor lick here. You see what I mean? I can even kind of use like B blues scale over this. Check it out. You see what I mean, right? Because for that moment, it's like, like I just played like a blues lick over the major, you see what I mean? But I'm not playing the obvious one, right? If it was over a B minor, it would sound maybe a little like you heard it before. But this way, maybe you haven't heard it before so much, right? It's just a little different because we're playing a... Okay. So, now, next one. This is the, the one I made up. I have no official name for this, so I, it could well be just some crazy British, uh, you know, bad. I went to a very inexpensive music school, I should point out, where, you know, occasionally the terminology was lost. Uh, and uh, this one is kind of one of my favorite, and it's a little weird, so same chord. So this is what I call, basically like a C-sharp minor flat five pentatonic, all right? So check it out. So it goes. I really like this, it's really angular, right? Well, you could think of it as C-sharp blues without the fifth. It goes like C-sharp, E, F-sharp, G, B, C-sharp, see what I mean? Right, okay, so you can really use that as kind of a spring, it's cool, right? Because it's just, it's just playing like, I'm really using G Lydian. But I'm just using this mode off it, this pendulum right here. Right? It's just like a fragment, you know. And he was asking me, like, how, how do I develop, you know, like, how do you play fast or develop, like, you know, I guess good technique, whatever. And um, it's a question that always comes up, and, uh, you know, without being kind of uh, flippant about it, I never practice playing fast. It's like a bad idea, I think, personally. You know, because then you're always, like, conscious about trying to shred on the instrument, you know, which is, it just sounds like that. It just sounds like you're just playing a bunch of nothing, you know. So it's much better to play ideas, like we were talking about, 
and play them really slowly. You know, the thing I was showing you with the arpeggio, you know, just a... Yeah, playing it really well, yeah. That stuff. The idea is, guys, that um, with playing this stuff, you know, when, you, when you're doing this kind of, uh, I guess, working on your technique, the first thing is just like, you know, minimum of movement, yes? Yeah? So you always want to keep your fingers close to the fingerboard, you know, or close to the strings, yeah? Um, but again, it, it, it comes down to actually, um, you know, playing, like, like I said, very slowly. So when you, when you play something, you know, uh, it's just, you know, it's like it's just not a question of playing fast, it's just playing the thing more rapidly, you know? So I, I always try, you know, if I, if I do it this way, you can probably see my right hand. Yeah, so what I'm doing here, right? You see how close my fingers are staying, right? And you notice my thumb is kind of resting on the string here. That's really important to do, I think. You know, when you move up the neck, so you come up for the yard. Right? You notice how my hands are kind of floating as it moves, right? It comes back down. So the way to develop that is just take, you know, scale like size. Well, let's say I'm going to play like a, I don't know, E flat Lydian from the bottom note here. Actually, from the bottom note on the bass, which is a good way to do it. Actually, I'm going to start with C, but I'm, I'm in E flat Lydian, right? So I'm going to go. So you see how my right hand is doing that, just kind of flowing up, right? And, and, and as I move up the strings, right? doing this thing where their fingers are really straight and always think it's like, like as if you're walking with like, like goose stepping you know what I mean it's kind of like not really cool you know for a multiplicity of reasons but it's better to bend your fingers at the knuckles like when you walk you bend your knees a little bit you know what I mean so that's what you want to do is like keep the fingers close watch this so if I'm playing something just static you know I can do this for a long time and it's just you know it doesn't require a lot of effort right but notice my fingers are staying really close to the strings, right? See what I mean? And so on. And when you play this stuff, I'm always trying to keep these two fingers like at sort of uniform distance away from the string. So when you're playing this slowly, you just play eighth notes and just go. Keeping really close, yeah? And the other thing too with playing fast, is I guess it's like, it's knowing where you're going on the bass, you know what I mean? So if I'm playing an idea, um, let me think of something like, okay, uh, let me think. Yeah, it's like that. That's like a diminished pattern, so I'm going. Well, it's just like triads and diminished thing, right? It's nothing terribly interesting, but uh, it'll, it'll work. So I know where I'm going on the next, so I'm going up a C triad. Come down an E flat minor one. Up an E flat major. Down an F sharp minor. Up an F sharp major. Down an A minor. So they're like major and minor. And so on like that, right? So because I know where I'm going on this, right? Because I practice slowly, it's easy to play it quickly. You see what I mean? Because I'm already thinking ahead. You know, once I've finished one of these ideas. When I'm here, I'm already thinking about playing down the E flat minor. Does that make sense? So I'm always like one step ahead of where I'm playing. You know what I mean? That's another key to playing. Like, I hate to say my like playing quickly, but playing with fluidity. Yeah? That's a thing. Like, thinking in advance. You know, about. Three notes, all right, that fit both chords, if you can find them. Yeah? Or even two, if it's like a struggle. And just use those to get you started, right? So, for instance, for you, let's try using the notes A, D, and E. Those three notes will fit on both chords. On the D major, they're the fifth, the root, and the ninth, yeah? And on the B flat, they're the major seven, yeah? The A, the D, the third, and the E sharp eleven, yeah? But play them up here so it speaks, yeah? Either here. Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three. 